I'm Mike from St. Thomas Economic Development here with another little update from the St. Thomas Mega Site. Nathan, we're back again on another topsoil pile. It's great you guys put this pile here just so we could be able to shoot here for everything on the site. Pristine views from here, okay? Just excellent views of the whole uh, industrial park from here, which we like to come up here with uh, with folks to have a look out from here. So see everything, all the action, except today, because it rained last night, so. It did rain a little bit, and so that's why there's no action behind us. But normally this would be uh, a wash with action as Pond 3, or uh, colloquially termed Uber Pond, yes. is, is being dug. What's What's going on? Yeah, so the Uber Pond, as we're calling it, or Pond 3, the least exciting uh, term for it. But yeah, that pond right there serves about 400 hectares of our overall site, um, about half of our, our site there for uh, stormwater drainage. And so uh, all through a series of ditches and pipes, all the rainwater gets collected and taken down to the Uber Pond in the southeast corner around the Yarmouth Pump Station and uh, gets collected there. And then we'll get uh, put into a pipe that goes to the uh, nearby Norman Drain to the south of the uh, CN tracks. So the water is taken in the pond. It is detained and released at a slower rate than it was even previously to um, this development happening around us. So a lot of engineering goes into the pond as we learned in a few Beehive episodes ago. We did indeed with those lovely civil engineers from Arcadis, I believe. Um, now, why is it necessary to detain that water? Why can't you just put it all into that downstream drain? Uh, the drain can only have handle so much water in it, right? So when we do these types of uh, analysis, we make sure that we're putting uh, a similar flow rate to the into these uh, existing water courses that was that could handle from before. In fact, but we just hold back all the water so we release it at a much slower rate. Because the area here, most agriculture before, we're now going to be increasing the hard surfaces on us. So we have to hold that water back to release it at a responsible rate. So it's good engineering practices and how we do the design and releasing the water into the natural environments around it. Also, we don't want to have cause any downstream issues for other folks as well. So we can release at that slow rate because of all that. That makes sense. Now, when you're calculating the volume that this pond needs to detain and the rate that it needs to go out, um, are you basing that on like a typical year's rainfall or like the 10 year max, 100 year max, you know, glacial melt max? What do you design it for? The pond is designed to a 100 year storm event, um, but it's released at a five year uh, storm event that's based on five years before anything happened here. So it's called the pre-development flow rate. So it releases at a very, very low flow rate and we're holding it back to a hundred year uh, post-development flow rate. Um, our site uh, all around here has uh, all these different sites around here. We'll also have to hold some water back on their own sites as well for some quantity. So we're holding some water back. Each of these other sites will hold some water back. So we'll have a quite a comprehensive stormwater uh, drainage system here to uh, handle all the varying flows that we get from one year, two year, five year, 25, 50, 100 year, and beyond. And beyond, that's that's great to hear. Uh, now this is quite a big pond. Will there be any water sport opportunities for people on this pond? There will be no water sport uh, activities, unfortunately, although it's gonna be a very large pond. It's gonna be about 35 acres in size. So it's a huge pond. We'll have a very small island in the middle of it uh, for some uh, plantings and whatnot like that. Uh, locals are calling it, uh, well, whatever, it might be all Nathan's Island after it's all said and done, we'll see. Wow. Nathan's Island. You heard it here first. Um, I mean, someone's got to get there and plant the flag. Isn't that how that works? I will swim to that island and do that just for fun. Why not, eh? Okay. Well, we'll get a small boat. We'll be your spotter on that. It's a long swim. We wouldn't want anything to happen. And uh, so, Nathan, will you be able to stand in that pond and keep your head above water? I will be able to stand that pond. It should be about uh, four to five feet deep. And that's going to be the permanent pool elevation in that pond. And so that level in the pond will always be there. It helps settle any particulates that come in from the rainwater that flow into that pond. And once that particulate settle out, it kind of accumulate in the bottom of the pond. And then above that permanent pool level, there's uh, some expanded storage where the water will build up in the pond and then eventually flow to an outlet structure and release. Uh, but that's just how the pond type of works. But yes, I will be able to stand the pond assuming there's no rainfall events coming into it. So, but yeah, 35 acre pond, lots of flow coming into it. It's, it's going to be a big one. That sounds good. Well, Nathan, we appreciate you taking us through all this. This really has been a high watermark as far as we're concerned uh, for this show so far. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like our videos and don't forget to smash the subscribe button.